more listeners a few moments with Leonard Bernstein as he explains crooning, its origins and its place in the musical world. Mr. Leonard Bernstein. Crooning, a cacophony of sound cascading from a verdant musical jungle, or is it a well-planned, throaty accumulation of sounds by a great organizer of melody? You shall see. Mr. Besdale, if you please. Body out and bow, rotten diddy bow. Thank you, Mr. Besdale. Now that we have heard, we begin to wonder. One almost thinks of crooning as a fragmentary bit of Americana, revealing yet quasi-damaging in its consistency. And while the music is being paraphrased, listen to this strain. Yada booty do roadie para teetin da ba mo. And so we begin to see what Gerald Deckhart was getting at. Nothing frightening about it, indeed. It's a fructifying experience. You see, Deckhart was not so much interested in musical content as he was in the elasticity of the note. The music would be sung heartily or with a moue of distaste. Mr. Desdale. Not a doo-doo. Oh, button, button, dee 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 doo 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 Button, doo Slowly we come to terms with crooning, but it is not until 1923 that we realize the dynamism, the inbreeding of crooning with the more stable or unprogresso kind of music. So the cross-fertilization had begun. <laughs> the inculcation, the emergence, the precipitation, the entree, so to speak, the entrance to the back door of music had been accomplished, and there was no going back. I want you to pay particular note to the enchanting Deckhart variation here, Mr. Bessdale. How can two themes run concurrently? Well, it's a tribute to the genius of Deckhart. While one melody advances rubato, the other recedes contrapuntally into the background, diminuendo, barely making itself heard, only to return with mild influence. <laughs> If that sounded oppressive, it was exactly what Deckhart set out to achieve, the bittersweet. Again, we hear the melancholy yearnings of one sad note overtaking another sad note without taxing the structure. The Weltschmerz of these Deckhart outpourings never ceases to amaze me. Mr. Bezdale, would you please finish this particular piece we're dealing with now? <laughs> So there you have it. Descartes knew that sooner or later he'd have to be dealt with. His music was a force that could not, would not be denied. In my So there we have it. Descartes knew that sooner or later he'd have to be dealt with. His music was a force that could not, would not be denied. His was a world of melody. Melody meant all the world to him. I think we must reckon crooning as a serious, yet simpatico art form. Not to do so would be unwise. Bravissimo, my good friend Descartes. I applaud you. Thank you for what you did.